Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis uh, for the week ahead starting 11th of September. So let's get into the um, the week ahead and it will be a busy week in the United States with inflation rate and retail sales data taken center stage followed by the University of Michigan Consumer Confidence Index and uh, industrial production figures and export and import prices. But I think what's going to be really focused on is uh, is the inflation data, and we'll get into that in um, later on in the video. Investors will also be eagerly awaiting the European Central Bank's interest rate decision and the ZEW uh, Economic Sentiment Index for Germany. And again, I think the biggest uh, uh, event this week for Europe is is going to be the interest rate decision. Um, the focus uh, says. Um, uh, in, in the United Kingdom, the focus will be on unemployment rate earnings and July's GDP growth figures, industrial production and foreign trade data. And in China, key indicators to watch include August industrial production, retail sales, unemployment rates. And Australia will release the NAB uh, Business Confidence Index. So lots going on this week in the world of um, uh, data releases and some fundamentals and also as well. If you are a member of the private mentoring group, then um, if you go to the trading videos channel, uh, you'll be able to get some more in-depth fundamentals beyond what is um, shown in this video. And uh, this week we have, as well as the technical analysis video as well, which goes over all the pairs that um, I'm looking at trading and uh this week we have i think from from the 5th of september 5th 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 videos for you to watch all uh you know useful videos from trade setups to our group our live group call on wednesday the recording and uh, some setups and stop hunts etc so um just in case you haven't watched that and you're watching this video definitely head over to the uh, trading videos channel and if you are interested in joining the uh, the private mentoring group um i open in the uh, first week of october I haven't decided on a specific date yet but um, a, a specific date yet but when i do uh, i'll let you know in this uh, in these weekly videos or I'll, if you're on the email list i'll email you so getting into the uh, technicals and the fundamentals so Dollar index, uh, the Fed are on hold in September, but will they hike in November? This is data dependent, uh, higher for longer rates. So what you've, what you've seen since uh, pretty much mid-July is the dollar really kind of go on this tear. And one of the main reasons is because the data has been uh, defying, I guess, the market, uh, been getting you know really uh, good economic news out of the uh, US and also inflation has remained slightly sticky so um which means that it hasn't really gone down to the central bank's two percent uh target which is a mandate they have to try and get inflation down to two percent now um bond traders brace for risk uh inflation sorry yes bond traders risk for risk inflation will fuel rate hype backs okay it doesn't really make sense but yeah well, the way it's worded anyway, but um, it says roughly even odds put on another rate increase in November and consumer price index release this week may set market expectations. So bond traders are, are highly sensitive to interest rates and the economy. Uh, they're seen as uh, obviously some of the smartest uh, traders. Um, you know, in, in, in any asset class. And so when bond traders are, uh, you know, doing something uh, it is highly correlated to Forex because Forex is also driven by uh, interest rates, inflation and the economy, right? So they're highly interlinked. So bond traders have been ratcheting up bets that the Federal Reserve isn't done with its interest rate hikes just yet. Next week will help determine if they're right. So the monthly consumer price index report on Wednesday will provide the latest insight into how much further the central bank may need to go to pull inflation back towards its target with the economy defying gloomy forecasts and energy prices rising. Economists are forecasting the biggest monthly jump in 14 months and swaps uh, market is pricing in risk that will come in even higher than expected so the uh, the bond market is expecting um, higher inflation um, and on the back of better 
uh, uh, economic data so that if that does come true then the dollar isn't likely to slow down uh, anytime soon and any any pullbacks in price are, are really just going to be um, buying opportunities whether they pull back to that level there or this level here I think the dollar is just um, you know continuing to be a buy as long as the data supports that narrative that's the key thing is that the data has to support it right and so uh, let's just I'll just adjust this uh, supply zone to around here so um, so yeah I think the path for these resistance is continued to the upside of course there is always a risk that inflation does come in lower than expected and if it does i think the dollar is going to drop a bit um, i think the highs are probably put in but um, i don't think the dollar is is an overall sell but i think there would be an opportunity to short the dollar if that inflation does come in lower than expected uh, this week the dollar yen continues to grind higher um, regardless of, um, of what the Bank of Japan uh, are doing and this week that what they what they uh, was it this week or last week they pretty much came in in fact no matter of fact let me go back to um, the dollar right so the dollar got some more got some more analysis on the dollar just to kind of back up that, that you know what the bond traders were saying um, what you'll see in here is the FedWatch tool, CME FedWatch tool, and what they also do is um, uh, show the probabilities uh, being priced in. And what you're seeing is is current hold is 53.1%, uh, and the fact that um, uh, there could be a 43.6% uh, chance of a hike and we're in November by the way so this is November November's pricing so um, November they really are pricing in the chance of, of a rate hike and you can see how it's been getting more and more so a month ago the chances of a hike was 27.8 percent a week ago it was 33.5 percent a day ago it was 43.6 percent so um, the probability has been increasing of a rate hike in November, which is supporting the, the dollar. Also as well, um, dollar bulls look forward to their favorite month of the year. So uh, bias for more dollar outperformance, NAB's control says, and market positions for dollar gains next month options show. So um, it says here that the dollar bulls have a history on their side. Uh, going into September as the currency has strengthened during that month for six years in a row Not only has the Bloomberg dollar index ri risen every September since 2017 But its average of 1.2% gain in that month also beats the performance of any other month over the same period Strategists say reasons include quarter end buying and general increase in in haven demand ahead of October, which is notorious for stock market declines. And so um, you've got statistics on your side, right? And you've got the fundamentals on your side. Dollar performs well in September since 2017. Um, it's outperformed pretty much every other month. And so the month of September tends to be a good, uh, tends to be good for the dollar. And the usual explanation is that risk aversion tends to rear its ugly head, and this is boosting demand for the higher yielding safe haven king of G10 FX, says Valentin Marinov, head of Group of Ten Foreign Exchange Research and Strategy at Credit Agricole CIB in London. So you've also got that in the case for supporting the dollar and also as well hsbc re released a report uh, their global fx report in for september and uh they have changed their outlook on buying the uh, the dollar uh, the currency outlook they say that they are changing their view on the broad us dollar so they now see it as strengthening through to end uh, 2024 as tightening begins to buy a faltering global growth outlook should further benefit the counter cyclical dollar king dollar has already been making a comeback but its reign can last longer now this is only one report from one bank but um from what i see it looks like they're um 
uh, are a lot of banks who are changing their tune and uh, the data is supporting that narrative to buy the, uh, the dollar and then they also have their old and new forecasts where they've forecasted the dollar index now and the dollar overall to kind of uh, at least uh, strengthen right so 104s 106s 107s into q4 and q1 of 2024 so their old um euro dollar forecast was for 113 115s um going into the end of the year now it's like 107s 105 so um i do think that uh, the dollar is you know going to be uh, the buy for the foreseeable future but the caveat to that you know is that the data needs to support that narrative as well as obviously other um currencies not doing so well either so overall dollar um is looking like a buy and you can see that now going back to the yen when it comes to the yen the yen um on paper if you're looking at it from a central bank perspective and where they are fundamentally uh, from or from a monetary policy perspective you would think you know this is playing out basically as planned the uh the issue with uh, i guess the um the, the dollar yen uh, falling to the downside and the yen increasing in in strength is more to do with the fact that the um the bank will Bank of Japan Ministry of Finance, uh, they, they're ramping up verbal defense as yen sets a fresh 10 month low. So um, a weakening yen doesn't, um, isn't, isn't desirable for the, uh, for the Bank of Japan. Um, it can uh, add to inflation. And so the yen pulled back from a 10 month low against the dollar after Japan issued its strongest warning in weeks over sharp currency moves, raising the odds of government intervention if the slump continues. So um, beyond the price chart, there is an invisible hand that is going to try to um, uh, push the yen down if it starts to devalue too much, especially against the dollar, right? And so, there's no technical analysis in the world that's going to show you that on the price chart. So, you know, this is the reason why we look at, you know, the fundamentals and really what is going on behind the scenes and why prices are going higher or lower. So um, you have that going on. And um, and uh, the last time the central bank intervened right in October, you can see pretty much what happened. They started to intervene at uh, the 152s. And you saw again an eventual, you know, something like a two thousand pit move. So, if they intervene again, the uh, the thinking is that you will see again another, you know, sharp move to the downside as they defend their uh, their currency right from weakening too much um, against the uh, the dollar within this within this area. And also as well, um, basically uh, the. Ministry of Finance, whenever they come out and, and say certain things to defend their, their, their yen, um, it's basically put on a scale of one to eight. So one being pretty much nothing to really worry about, they're just commenting, but eight being basically intervention is imminent, right? And so um, MUFG Bank have said that they think that intervention is imminent, right? Based off of the comments that they made uh, uh, this week or last week and uh, they say alert levels based on 2020 comments you know ranked one to eight today's signals a level eight so intervention could happen at any moment within the next you know maybe week or two or three who knows but it's imminent imminent is like saying how long is a piece of string but it's not too long now um so if you start to see the yen um dollar yen continue to rise just be wary if you are going long that you know that they can come out at any time and really you know basically you know push try to push the market down so let's see what happens what happens there with the uh, with the dollar yen uh, dollar cad um oh sorry dollar swiss apologies uh, pretty much, as I was saying, I was wait, really waiting for a pullback. I really want to get long on this and waiting for a pullback, but prices didn't pull back. The dollars just continue to go to the upside. So um, we have created a bit more of a demand zone. It's, it is a wide demand zone, unfortunately. But when you see a wide demand zone like this, the best way to kind of trade that is to you know try to break it down into um, 
uh, one of the things you can do is break down into levels of uh, support and resistance. So within that demand zone, because prices are going to make it higher highs, higher lows, you know, add, for example, um, one of the things you can do is add uh, horizontal uh, support and resistance. So at this area here is where you're probably like, likely to look for a buy trade. It's still a bit pricey, but ultimately um, it's gonna be either that level or that level um, for me as to why I would want to look for any kind of uh, buy trades uh, from a fundamental perspective. No reason to really buy the Swiss franc at the moment unless we go into some sort of severe risk off. But even then, if I'm buying a Swiss franc, it wouldn't be against the uh, the US dollar. Uh, dollar CAD, dollar CAD um, didn't have great news um, at the beginning of the week. I think their GDP came out, was it last week? The GDP came out um, as, as, um, as contracting, but then they did actually get some decent news um, when it came on Friday. And Canada jobs gains double expectations and wages accelerate. So unemployment rate stays at 5.5%, breaking string of increases and gains led by professional and technical services construction. So Canada's labor market blew past expectations and wages rose at a faster rate, signaling there's still some gas left in the jobs machine, even as the economy gears down. So um, that was kind of supportive, which is what strengthened the Canadian dollar um, on Friday. Now, um, uh, I don't think I'm necessarily an, an all out buyer of the Canadian dollar, but um, against the US dollar, I think there's definitely room for, you know, some buys somewhere around these areas here. Probably the lower end is more preferred when it comes to a demand zone. Of course, you can look for, you know, buy trades there um, if you feel that you still want to be a buyer of the uh, the dollar uh, the us dollar over the canadian dollar but um i think if you do pull back i think yeah i think the one three fours i think is going to be nice for or nice or cheaper for a buy uh new zealand dollar us dollar and again saying that the path of these resistance is to the downside and that hasn't changed um really just waiting for a for a decent pullback to get involved in this uh, there's no reason to really buy the New Zealand dollar at the moment for me uh, just looking really at, at, at pullbacks into uh, at that uh, this level here into this supply zone here and also as well you've got the added um, confluence of a horizontal level of uh, support past uh, support and now uh, resistance so i think anywhere in this level is going to be quite nice and even a better bargain price is going to be if prices pull back to that 60 cent 60.5 um, area as well so that for me um you know the fed is still in um potential uh hike mode for november and the rbnz um commodity currencies in this risk-off environment not really performing well pound uh dollar again i think this is obviously going to the downside and um this is really more based on some recent comments from um from the bank of england governor uh andrew bailey who came out on the 6th of september and basically said uh that that he's signaling anyway that rate hikes may be near an end and the pound falls to the lowest in three months after dovish shift so um my bias was actually for more of a stronger pound um as long as obviously the bank remained a bit more hawkish but since andrew bailey's come out um and and shifted to a more dovish stance um the pound is probably likely to fall in the short term i don't think it's necessarily the worst currency and you can buy it against other currencies but you know the pound at the moment uh, based off of just sentiment unfortunately um not doing um not doing great if you were going into any kind of uh, long trades on the pound so policy lag means substantial impact from rates is yet to hit so the bank of england governor Andrew Bailey said UK interest rates are probably near the top of the cycle because a further because a further marked drop in inflation is likely this year, a sign that the central bank may bring an end to its quickest tightening cycle in three decades. Now, this is again uh, dependent upon inflation coming down. Now, if inflation remains sticky and remains uh, or remains high, higher than the two percent target, then 
I think he's going to have to uh, readjust that uh, that bias, and the um, and the Bank of England will continue to probably hike a bit more, maybe once more. So, um, yeah, we we we've seen the UK interest rates are now expected to peak at five point five percent, and it said here that the rate futures at two p.m. show a sixty nine percent chance of a quarter point rate hike rise to five point five percent on September twenty second. Um, after the Bank of England's meeting down from more than 80% earlier in the week. So the market is really pricing out, um, you know, the rate hikes and the chances of a further rate uh, raise uh, to 5.75% stood at um, f uh, 46% by December and peak at 49% in February with investors expecting cuts rates into the beginning uh, to begin around a year's time. So... <clears throat> the uh the current rate is 5.25 percent and so the market is is slowly pricing out um you know further rate hikes um it's still a second rate hike which is basically why you're seeing the pound start to sell off whereas you know you're looking at the uh, the dollar on the other hand and the dollar is looking at hiking right and so or the potential for a hike so from that perspective you can see why the uh the pound is weakening against the uh, the dollar there is data this week as well so data this week uh, unemployment rate and also as well i think there's gdp and so if that does support uh uh rate hikes or not well, you know then we'll see whether you probably want to go short or long on this currency pair so the dovish dovishness unfortunately if you're long pound um, you know, it's something that you can't uh, foresee, but um, let's see what happens. But uh, if you are looking to be a seller, then that's going to be a nice uh, pullback. If you're looking to be a buyer uh, of the pound against the dollar, based off of maybe some dollar disappointing news, then I think that demand zone is going to be decent for a potential buy. Uh, I've added pound yen to the analysis for this week. We do have a large demand zone here, um, which again can be broken up but the main focus is going to be around this area here so again from a from a from a uh, interest rate divergence perspective you would expect prices to go to the upside but ultimately it also depends on uh, yen intervention as well so there are there is um, the opportunity to look for some short trades within that supply zone uh, there so depending on what happens the shift in dovishness from the Bank of England and maybe some hawkish intervention support from the yen could mean that you could see prices start to you know come up this week but then start to uh, break down into this zone right here the euro dollar again euro not doing well um, I've been saying this for a little while now and it's just been really poor economic news coming out of the um, of the euro so um, Europe where are we now so ECB sees hike or pause dilemma going down to the wire so um, so ooh, one second yeah so um, uh, well done. here we go so economists in Bloomberg uh, survey almost evenly split on outcome. First, of free rate cuts next year is anticipated for March. So we're starting to hear about cuts uh, for, for, for Europe and um, a rate hike is more 50-50. So economists see the European Central Bank lifting rates, uh, interest rates one more time to tame inflation. They're just not sure it will happen next week. And uh, so whereas maybe about a month or two ago it was pretty much more of a done deal i think now the um the 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 economists are you know more a bit more uncertain so there's a split you know between the bloomberg survey shows an almost uh, even split between those anticipating a 10th consecutive hike on thursday and those anticipating a hawkish pause before the deposit rate reaches a record uh, of four percent in october so um yeah it's 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 a tricky one for for Thursday, and if they do a hawkish pause, um, then you may see the euro you know sell off. But the data hasn't really been supporting 
um, a euro hike um, in terms of their economy, their stagflation fears. And so uh, ultimately, if you are looking to buy the euro, you can look for maybe some buyers now, but I still think the path of least resistance is to the downside. So any pullbacks into uh, these zones, I think are gonna be decent for a sell trade. So either you've got a uh, zone here, that's nice. And then you've got a nice area right there as the uh, I think the, uh, the, the the dollar is on more solid uh, footing than the Europe euro yen again um, we could see some upside right here but I do think that if the yen weakens across the board then the Bank of Japan will likely intervene so I'm anticipating in fact uh, a short trade um, on this currency pair. I'm not really convinced by buying uh, Europe at the moment unless the data supports it. But I do think that, um, you know, I think I'm more, more biased towards getting short on this currency pair just based off of getting involved and getting ahead of a potential intervention by the Bank of uh, Japan. But if you do want to be a buyer of the yen, then you've got some options. I would probably wait for prices to either stop hunt below that level or you're looking for a, uh, a demand zone in and around uh, this 156. The euro pound um, did come up to this uh, supply zone, uh, hasn't sold off just yet. I think this week is definitely going to be pivotal for both uh currencies and depending on what happens this week will determine whether you know you want to get long or short on this currency pair so if you want to get ahead of the news of course now is probably the time uh, this week is the time uh, if you want to get long on the euro then you're looking at you know pullbacks into this level i think i'm going to pull this down to here and that's where the demand zone is. So yeah, I think any pullbacks down into this deeper end of the demand zone, the 85 cent area is gonna be decent for a potential buy. Of course, if you get a pullback into these areas here to try and look for short trades, that's also uh, okay too. Um, the Australian dollar, again, suffering against the um, the, uh, the US dollar. And that's really kind of based on uh, the fact that China isn't growing. Uh, recent Australia trade surplus narrows in July as mining exports fall. So Australia's monthly trade surplus uh, narrowed in July as exports of natural resources such as gold, coal, and iron ore fell while imports climbed. So uh, typically um, the Australian economy runs a trade surplus, but um, it's closer to maybe a more of a trade deficit now. Um, uh, and this is really due to uh, China slowing down because if China is slowing down and, and they're not buying as much uh, or importing as much from Australia, then Australia are not going to export as much, right? And so that's you can see that having an effect on Australia's economy. And so for me, um, with the U US economy doing uh, decent and the Australian uh, economy not doing so well, and you know, risk off, uh, obviously in the market, risk off uh, benefits the, uh, the US dollar. Um, again, just any, I think any pullbacks into that zone is decent, or if you get a move to the downside and a pullback into that supply zone. So that's really where my bias is. Of course, you can look for buy trades now in anticipation of some sort of dollar weakness if you're anticipating dollar weakness, but um, I'm not. So I'm looking for just uh, looking for pullbacks. And finally, gold. You know, we did get, you know, a move to the downside. Um, uh, based off of uh, dollar strength, there is uh, some news about gold uh, that came out recently, and it was talking about investor allocations to gold at highest since 2012. JP Morgan, so gold investment has risen over the past year, driven by central bank purchases, with overall implied allocations by non bank investors at the highest since 2012. JP Morgan Chase. Uh, including Nicholas, I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce his surname, said in a note, and he said, there is little doubt that the pace of central bank buying is now a most important factor for gauging the future trajectory of gold prices. So that's interesting. Also as well, China's gold binge extends to 10 months as reserves 
climb. So uh, China added to its gold reserves for a 10th straight month, extending a push to bolster its hefty stockpile as it tries to diversify away from the US dollar. Interesting. So, um, so yeah, with that potentially supporting uh, the dollar, um, sorry, supporting gold, could that mean that gold, you know, price moves up from here? Or it could pull back to this uh, 1880s before, uh, you know, looking at um, uh, going uh, long. But either way, uh, central banks look like they're, or the Bank of China anyway, looking like they're buying on the way down. So uh, that just means that they can buy gold for cheap if they expect prices, gold prices to be somewhere up here in the future based off of, you know, some risk off uh, events that are potentially on the horizon. So. Um, I think in the short term, it's going to be a tough trade to buy gold, um, especially as we go into, uh, you know, this recent dollar strength. But if um, inflation is coming down, for example, for the in the US economy, then I think that actually might be a decent buy um, for the uh, for the for gold as rate hikes get priced out of the uh, the market, and so gold might could be a potential buy in this uh, 1919 area or down into the 1880s around here. But again, um, it looks like the dollar is going to be. Um, uh, strong for a while of course if the data supports that narrative and um so my, for, for me probably be like looking for uh, potential short trades i'm not really a trader of gold to the short side but um that would be where if you were looking for any kind of short trades on gold looking for short trades around here so that's where we are and that's yeah that area there anywhere within that area there so uh, that brings us to the end of the uh, weekly analysis. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, take care and I'll speak to you all soon. Hi, everyone. I uh, just wanted to talk about an idea that um, like you don't see this all the time. But one thing that I've noticed over the years, and I mentioned this in the past, is that um, leading up into an event, um, and I say an event, but let's say, uh, you know, an announcement, a uh, big um, you know, data release like, for example, inflation, jobs, etc., interest rates. Um, what you what can happen is is that you've got a scenario where liquidity hunting occurs, yeah, or what looks like liquidity hunting occurs. And so, um, I just want to explain this uh, this 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 um, statement that I made in the group, which is in the week before the RBA announcement. Notice how the Australian dollar strengthened yesterday, uh, the day. Yesterday, the day before the announcement, um, you know, price gave an indication that there were sellers of the Australian dollar in anticipation of a hold. Now, you know, we know or well, we knew that the likelihood, obviously, looking at the Australian dollar channel, we knew that there was the likelihood that you know uh, it was going to be a hold next week, right? So the next, you know, this was um, from Westpac, uh, also as well, uh, you know. Uh, there was some data that came out that was talking about, um, you know, inflation coming down and inflation, um, you know, the central bank was likely to uh, hold rates, right? So anyways, um, so you're thinking, well, why would the Australian dollar strengthen going into, you know, uh, the, the announcement, right? And so um, my, you know, theory is that what, what happens is, is, you get a situation where you know it, it basically the price action produces some liquidity. So let's go to, um, for example, the trade that I took yesterday, which is the pound Aussie. Yeah. So into um, you know into the week, what we had was you know uh, this was the announcement. You know today, RBA decision, and it was expected to they were expected to hold. So holds obviously mean that there's less likely to be some sort of. Um, you know appreciation but it does it does also depend upon um you know the the hawkishness or or dovishness of the uh the statement as well because you know clues as to what they're going to do next you know is also baked or could be in it or is normally in that statement which um 
even though they might hold, you could also obviously see, you know, they were really hawkish. Then, um, you know, that would have, that may have gone the other way. But of course, the data had to support that narrative. And at the moment, data is not supporting uh, a rate hike. So for me, the limit of the Australian strength made sense. So as we saw, you know, lower highs, lower lows being made, right, into the meeting. And we also saw, um, you know, the accumulation uh, I say accumulation, but an auction of uh, the pound Aussie into uh, where's my tool? Where's my fucking tool now? Sorry, guys, one second. I don't know if it, oh, there it is. Um, yeah, so we saw the you know the auction right where buyers and sellers are there, market makers are there, and then we saw as well um, a nice stop hunt below the market right. So the day before. Yeah, there was a nice um, stop hunt where you know the market's taking out all this, the, the 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 liquidity to the to the downside, and as we you know we're going down towards you know the the week and the, the Australian dollar is appreciating. What you're seeing is you know a build up of liquidity above levels. You know what I mean above that level, above that level there, above that level there, above you know certain swings. So the liquidity to the upside, of course, right far as if you're going short these are all buy orders buy stops and if you you know need fuel to go to the upside means that you want to you know you want to short the uh, um, or buy the, uh, the, the the pound against the Australian dollar what you need actually is this is liquidity for your for your for sell orders right for the short orders to go you know higher and so um, yeah, so basically there was a build up of liquidity above the market, right, as the market starts to go down, and then you get the uh, the auction, the range, the stop hunt below, and then, you know, you've got this move to, to the upside, which basically piqued my interest as we were going into the Aussie uh, announcement, and again, you've got a little, you know, auction around here as well, so there was, again, some business being done in and around here before prices went to the upside. So, um, you know, heading again, heading into the uh, the announcement, there was really no reason for the Australian dollar to strengthen, I think, other than really, if you look at the bigger picture, only to really buy at, you know, bargain prices, right? Because this is how the market, you know, reloads and recycles, you know, people, um, you know, entities take profit, right? Then you get, you know, a move where, you know, liquidity is built up and that is probably looking, you know, to for traders to get out of the institution to get allowed the institutions to get out of their position slowly and then comes you know the downside this was obviously aided by some disappointing pound news as well but ultimately um that pound news was uh, capped to the downside and then we get you know the uh, the move to the upside and so um you know what i'm trying to say is is this is as well is um that you will have you sometimes have these scenarios in this environment set up so we know, first of all, that the RBA are looking to hike. That was baked into the probabilities of things. And it was, it's unlikely that they're looking to hike rates, right? And then you get a move the week before prices start to come down. We get, you know, the, the auction where um, in large institutions are allowed to do business for, you know, for, for a while. This looks like a bargain price. Then you get, you know, a stop hunt. And then you get, you know, some signs that, in fact you know, unfair auctions and you get signs that in fact this could be an act and a buy, right? And then obviously it starts to, you know, go to the upside. So, you know, my bias was always to the, to, to go, you know, short on that Australian dollar. So, you know, the day before pretty much got involved, not in necessarily the stop hunt. I didn't see the stop hunt. I didn't, well, I didn't see it. I saw it after the fact. Um, but I waited for a bit more confirmation and I ended up getting in here and on an eight hour, you know, capture paying candle and uh, it's been a profitable trade so far. And so going back to, for example, the CAD yen. Now, CAD yen is interesting because we, you know, we're setting up for another stop hunt above these highs, right? And the same scenario really is, is, is occurring in the sense of, um, you know, we've got the probability of a, um, of a, of the Canadian Bank of Canada looking to hold rates. And so, um, and let me just continue on from here where it says, where it says many price action traders were following the short trend, which meant there was a buy of liquidity building to fuel the sell orders once 
you know, the expected hold announcement was made. So that's what I explained. So could the repeat uh, of that be happening with the CAD? Uh, you know, Bank of Canada expected to hold rates, but there is seducing price action today that suggests that the CAD should strengthen to the uninitiated of people who traded to just follow price action. Unless the Bank of Canada do actually hike rates tomorrow, which is highly unlikely, this presents another nice shorting opportunity set up into uh, the expected hold. So again, the likelihood is that we are, you know, they're going to hold, right? It's 3% chance, you know, of a hold according to the uh, Canadian interest rate expectations for September. And so, um, and at 31% uh, chance of a hike in December and then 1%, then, you know, the, the market's pricing in uh, some cuts, which means for me, the CAD really isn't a buy, at least in, in the short term. And so, again, going back to, you know, this uh, price action and uh, setup on the on the CAD, we're seeing again a nice little uh, trade here potential. Let's see if we get enough pips. It hasn't really gone far enough to for my liking um, as well. I'm not really that convinced. Of course, stop hunts can be you know from from five to ten pips to maybe you know a hundred pips. But you know I prefer at least at least uh, you know. Uh, a decent a, a more amount of uh, pips to be convinced that traders are going long and also as well um, that there's a bigger stop hunt above there but if you are looking to get involved in this then I would say have a bit of a larger stop than usual um, and then see what happens right so this is convincing traders that they want to go long right into that level yeah takes out some stops you know all these stops above these levels that have been created so there was a level created here, right? For traders going short, level traded uh, created there, which is just creating liquidity above the market. I think there was something, some more, yeah, some more levels right here. So it's taken out all the stops, seduced all the liquidity to go, you know, everyone to go long, which means their stop losses are below the market. All their stop losses are here. So that's basically the liquidity that the market needs potentially for tomorrow's announcement. You know to go to the downside um, because ultimately why would you know prices continue to go to the upside if the you know Canada Bank of Canada are expected to hold and also hold for the foreseeable future and maybe cut into next year according to you know what's being priced in now again you know the CAD, CAD weakness doesn't mean that you know there won't be any yen weakness right so there could also be yen weakness which is driving this at the moment um i can't see anything for now so um again my you know uh, medium to long term bias is to buy the uh, the yen on some yen strength especially uh, you know with some risk off um, sentiment still coming in from uh, china um, there was uh, some some news that came in today i think it was this morning and yeah, China services PMI slipped to 51% from uh, 51.9 in July, missing market forecast of 53.6. So again, way under, it was the softest increase in services activity since the start of the year amid mounting downward pressure on the economy. So again, nothing, it's, it's not been great for the, um, uh, for the Chinese economy. So um, risk off potential for a trade right here you could take it now if you want to um, but I would say definitely have more of a wider stop in anticipation that prices could actually go higher overnight and then start to roll over as you know it doesn't have the announcement down here though it has the uh, IV PMIs and also unemployment rate but tomorrow around that uh, you know that three o'clock I think it is uh, we should see the um, Bank of Canada announcement, and then we just go to um, let me go to uh, trading economics one sec. Yeah, so again, we've got Bank of Canada interest rate decision expected to you know be a hold. Uh, the consensus and the forecast at tomorrow Wednesday at three p.m. So let's see what happens. The risk rewards. Um, if you are interested in this trade, you don't have to necessarily get involved in it. If you don't believe in it, if you don't want to buy the yen, or if you want to buy the CAD against another, you know, currency pair, right? If you think that the yen isn't worth buying, and maybe you want to try and trade the, the, the pound CAD, for example, I think that's a there's a nice setup occurring on that as well. I did post that earlier. So pound CAD. Um, 
think there's a uh, setup along along here. There's stop hunt there. If prices do stop hunt before uh, you know the the announcement, I think that's going to also be quite nice as well. So yeah, you know you've had a stop hunt right there above the level right there, and then you could get one. You know, to the downside, you could get one to the upside. So you don't necessarily have to buy the the, the CAD yen. You could buy the pound, the pound CAD if it sets up, of course. But um, yeah, I was just uh, going over obviously the idea uh, that you know we do have that environment again uh, working out in terms of um, you know what happens with the Australian dollar, and now it could happen with the uh, Canadian dollar. All right, guys, hope that helps. Take care. Speak to you all soon.